Why do I have to see these dull, boring films in the middle of my day? Hurry up, you fool. How does it look for a director of personnel to be late for an employment of the handicap meeting? It's all your fault. You're stupid, disorganized, and lack the proper attitude to be my assistant. The only reason I keep you is because you are deaf. Oh, Dr. Liebling, come in. It's nice to see you. I think you know everyone here. Except Howard Scarf. Howard, this is Dr. Liebling. I do Howard is the producer of our new film, on Employment of the Handicapped. Dr. Liebling is director of personnel at Deutschland Dairies. I thought it'd be a good idea at this point to get some feedback from a prospective employer. Kind of stiff, isn't he? No, he's sober. He always acts this way. Okay, Harry, ready when you are. All right, everyone. Here's the moment we've all been waiting for. Okay, Howard, let her roll. How long will it take, Harry? I'm in a hurry. Why not do yourself a favor? Why not be a little braver? Why, Why not, not give someone a helping hand? You'll thank your lucky star. It's time that somebody spoke up. It's time everybody woke up. It's high time that you and boyers understand that there's a world of really talented lawyers, accountants, and doctors, and so does church. Not to mention the truck drivers, bankers, and watchmen, and teachers, and filing clerks. A popular misconception's always had us labeled as clumsy, inadequate, second-rate workers, because we're disabled. No more bias or confusion. We've come to this one conclusion. Handicap, it's just a way to say you need. There isn't a single person here who wants a handout, no sir. All we want is an equal chance to be your grocer. Do yourself a favor, hire the handicap. Do yourself a favor, hire the handicap. What's the matter, Harry? You can't do that. Why not? 40 seconds into the film, you've got the audience by the throat. This film is supposed to promote the employment of the handicapped. Not supposed to be a musical. Harry, millions and millions of products and ideas are sold using these techniques. Trust me on this one. When they see this in Washington, they're gonna think I'm nuts. Well, it's um, unusual. Yes, it's a very different opening. <laughs> Isn't it? Maybe it'll get better, Harry. How could it? He's trying to bring us a musical on government money. What's wrong with that? Entertainment usually gets the point across a hell of a lot better than preaching does. Look, we're just out to encourage the employment of the handicapped by showing them as useful employees. Is there any money left to reshoot this thing? And to break down barriers of prejudice against the handicapped. And finally, to give the handicapped a better self-image, you know? To help, to help them realize it's ability that counts and nothing else. This film does all of that. Maybe we should see more of the film, Harry. Oh, all right, all right. It's just that if I'm going to be known as the man who set the handicap back 20 years, I'd like to see how I did it. I just hope 60 Minutes doesn't hear about this one. You know, the word handicapped has got a lot of different meanings. But incapable doesn't happen to be one of them. See, uh... There's a lot of people that think that if you can't hear the alarm clock or if you can't walk up a flight of steps or you can't see the fine lines in a blueprint, well, that means that you're not a normal person and you shouldn't be hired. Well, that is a lot of bull. Do you think that's all right for him to say bull like that, Harry? I mean, of course there's jobs we can't do, lots of them. But the way I look at it is that's what all you non-handicapped people are there for. I mean, we can't do everything. Charlie? Yeah. You missed a couple of these. You better check them over. Oh, really? <laughs> Great. Okay. 
That's another thing about being handicapped that makes me think I'm just like anybody else. I'm not perfect. Nobody's ever said there that There are a before. lot of people in this world that have made it with so-called handicaps. You got John F. Kennedy, for example. Kareem Jabbar. Sammy Davis, Jr. Are you Remember crazy? Kennedy's best? Those people he aren't handicapped. Without pain. You don't think a black one I do is handicapped? You take off the basketball court. No way would he admit that. There are rays. And what about Paul Williams, Mickey Rooney, Truman Capote? I got friends in wheelchairs that are taller than oh Beethoven. My God, you know, Beethoven did sued. not stop composing music just because he lost his hearing. And multiple strokes didn't stop Patricia Neal from going back to work, and loss of a leg did not stop Tony Fields either. Wow. That's a good point. And talk about handicaps. If you were going to hire yourself a salesman, would you hire Woody Allen or... Uh, Marty Feldman, or Peter Falk, or for that matter, back in the 50s, if you were going to hire yourself a front office receptionist, you probably wouldn't even have considered hiring Bette Midler or Barbara Streisand, I never because in those days, that way, everybody and everything had to be absolutely perfect. No, 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 stop the film. This is ridiculous. We're insulting famous people. Why, Harry? These are famous people. They're great people. All we're saying is, they had handicaps to overcome, and they did it. I think they'd agree. Nobody was prejudiced against those people. What? Nobody was prejudiced against Jackie Robinson? Jackie Robinson? Where did he come from? He has two arms and two legs. Ah, but he was black. That was his handicap, and he overcame it because he was damn good at his job. But he had to prove it. Who in the world is Jackie Robinson? And the guy up there playing the worker? He's just a handicapped person doing his job. Oh, I love that line about not being perfect. Yes, but listen, you're comparing a situation like an actor saying, hey, look, my face looks like a Mexican dinner. Aren't I interesting? To a guy saying, hey, look, I'm paralyzed from the waist down. Give me a job. No, I'm not. What I'm saying is there are all kinds of handicaps. We all have them. Look, when I was doing research for this job, I discovered that Companies employ handicapped people, severely handicapped people, and they don't even know it. People with diabetes, epilepsy, heart conditions, back problems, alcoholics. And what about tardiness, absenteeism, or just plain goofing off? Those are the real handicaps that may be more difficult to overcome than any physical limitations. Uh, well, hell, if you wear glasses, you're handicapped. I mean, we're just learning to accept them. Do you mean to tell me that Wearing glasses is a handicap? Well, sure. Glasses are a tool to help overcome a handicap, just like a, oh, a wheelchair is to someone without the use of their legs, or a talking calculator or a blinking telephone is for someone who has to overcome blindness or loss of hearing. Right. Okay. Okay, you've proven the whole world is handicapped. But where do we go from here? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? There were just so many ways to go. You mean this is all the film you've got? A factory worker and a disabled choir? No, there was more. I just, there's just so much to say, I, I had a hundred approaches. So then the point of view of this film is what? Pot luck? Sort of. I don't believe it. Well, thank God we've got some literature to hand out at the end of this picture. I wanted to get the best approach, so I went to Hollywood, I went to New York, just to get the best opinions from the top creative people. Was that in the budget, Madge? Mm hmm. Oh, yes. It was in the budget. Yeah, they all gave different approaches. Some good, some bad. Well, you filmed the good ones. No, I filmed them all. I can hardly wait. I think you should take the advertising approach. Hi, I'm Bob Ridgely here at this supermarket doing a survey to see if people can tell which product was made by a handicapped person. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Would you do us a big favor, please? Sure. <laughs> Would you look carefully at these two products and tell us, if you can, which one was made by a handicapped person? Oh, yeah, I'm good at this. You are? Oh, yeah. Oh, I can always tell. Uh, I, uh... Could be any handicap. Uh, well, I usually can tell. Deaf person, blind, I mean, it doesn't make any difference. No specific handicap. Well, in, in that case, it's, it's this one. You're positive it's this one. Oh, I am sorry! Shoot. Really? <laughs> For heaven's... I'm really surprised. They look exactly the same. Uh-huh. Uh, Amazing. Hey, don't feel bad. It's so hard to tell the difference that even experts like you can do it. Well, I'm going to get this kind from now on. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. The full test. Always they won't believe this in Washington. 
Why not try the on-the-spot, film at 11, eyewitness news approach? Film at 11, 10 Central, not seen in the East, Canada, or Mexico. Take one, Mark. Yes, you asked me if I worked with handicapped people. I, I've worked here for about 17 years, and I've learned quite a bit from handicapped people, and I don't know what the company would do without them. They do just as well as anybody else. They're tremendous people. I work with uh, some of the handicapped people in the past. Uh, some of them are very good workers, and some are not quite so good. He lost a leg, and later they had another operation. They had to uh, amputate the other leg, but he was very versatile on his wheelchair. I worked with deaf people, and uh, from all appearances, they did a fantastic job. We had a special drafting board for him, and he was a real uh, asset. He can do work with one hand that some guys can't do with two hands. He does a damn good job at it. Yes, I did work with a handicapped fella. He was black, and he was in a wheelchair, and he sat right next to me. He was an engineer. And uh, the only difference was that they had to lower the drafting table. Other than that, he was very, very good. In fact, he was so good, he quit Lockheed and went into business for himself as an architect. And that was the last I saw of him. <laughs> I work uh, with handicaps. I work with my boss. He's an idiot. I've been asked this question a million times, and I've always said, why not take the success story approach? I started Pride Electronics four years ago in a double garage with a $400 investment. Last year, we achieved sales of $3.6 million with a warranty return rate of less than 2%, which is much better than the national average of industries who hire so-called able-bodied employees. In my view, handicapped workers represent the most underutilized and precious resource in American industry today. That's why 90% of our employees are handicapped. They make terrific workers, and they're great for business. Oh, I like that approach. I think you should use the old turn the tables approach. That's what I think. Don't you use the thrill of victory approach? Oh, all right. If you want my opinion, I think the film should take the handicapped doing their own thing approach. handicapped here. What's the point? They're blind, Harry. Swing through, boys train, corner swing and man. You promenade. That's incredible. It really shows the true capacities. Now that tells it how it is. The best way is the direct, straightforward approach. Hi, friends. Sid Falco again for Sid Falco's Handicap City. And you know, down deep in my heart, I want to sell you one of these terrific handicapped workers. 
And today, like every day, it's a gigantic sale day here at Handicap City. Every day I'm getting in new stock, and that means that every day is a good day for you to come on down and pick out a top of the line, fully guaranteed, reconditioned model of your choice. Just come right on down and ask for me, Sid Falco. We've got them all here at Handicap City. We're the largest handicap dealership west of Chicago, and that means we've got whatever you need. We've got typists, lawyers, accountants, sorters, packers, administrators, mechanics, you name it, and I've got it. And friends, in this day of inflation, here's something that won't go up. Insurance rates do not go up when you hire a handicapped worker. Stop anywhere and compare. But just for letting me talk to you, I'll give you 5,000 Buffalo Chip Stamps absolutely free. Why, you just can't beat the deals I've got for you here at Handicap City. Oh, I don't believe what I'm oh, seeing. Come on down. Remember? Oh, hey, Harry, I think you. what he's trying now, to show is that handicapped workers I'll are a valuable out. commodity. Isn't that right, Howard? You got it, baby. <laughs> Why not try the understanding, unprejudiced approach? Hey, Lyle, what's new? Oh, I hear they're hiring some handicapped people in the design department. Oh, no. How do you know that? No, they're cutting down the legs on the drafting tables for the wheelchairs. Next, it'll be the telephones and the toilets. Yeah, I know. I suppose there isn't anything we can do. I guess we'll just have to give them a chance and see how they work out. I guess so. Well, they're human, too. Come yeah. on, I'll buy you a beer. Okay. think that this stuff represents handicapped people? Not all of it, but see, that's one of the problems. Handicapped people have no representation. You take television, for example, every hero, every heroine, they're all American types, there's not one pimple. Indeed. And what about all those precocious little brats who tell you what to buy? Oh no, I think it's about time America started to experiment with uh, real people. Which only leads to one conclusion. The media, the advertisers, they don't consider the handicapped wage earners or important consumers. But we're talking about 28 million adults and 8 million children in this country alone. So, while you're laughing at some of the things in this film, you're focusing on some of the positive things about the handicap. I like that. I think it shows that if you give a handicapped person a chance, they can usually do it. Some can, maybe most of them. Help. We're all just an accident away from a handicap every minute of the day. And that will not be our slogan for next year. I think the film works, Harry. Okay, we'll go with it. At least it has some traditional moments in it. Make prints and release it. We'll keep our fingers crossed. Harry, you won't regret it. I hope not. If it works, you've done a good job, Howard. And if it doesn't, well, maybe we can sell it to Saturday Night Live or The Gong Show. Is there any more for us to see? Ah, uh, just the closing credits. Oh, the ending. You'll love the ending. It's far out. All right, then. Well, we don't need you anymore, Howard. We're going to look at that ending, and then we'll have our meeting. Well, Harry, I really think I should probably stick around here. I think. No, no, no. We're running late, so thank you very much, Howard. Thank you. Okay. Bye. See ya. Ciao. All right. Let's see that ending. Did you look at all the closing credits? Did we pay all of those people? Just a few of them, Harry. Damn credits are longer than the picture. Which one was Norman Lear? I thought Lee Major. 
Rogers was supposed to be in this film. He said he was too tired. I can understand that. Do you think Howard has relatives in this picture? Say, do you know if any of these people are handicapped? I heard Betty White was canceled. I just hope we've done something here to encourage employment of the handicapped. Howard is right, Harry. There are a lot of ways to go about it. This is a different approach. And a good one. I just hope Washington agrees. There are ways.